Hey, Antonio and I got back from the hospital not too long ago. We got takeout for a late lunch if you haven't eaten already. Did you go out? I'll just leave the food in the fridge if you are out somewhere. I'm here at the slots. I've got a feeling I'm going to win big today. I can feel it in my bones. Again? I told you to cut back a little since we need to pay for Antonio's medical expenses. We had the doctor examine him. He felt a bit feverish. The doctor ran some tests today. Turns out, it's not just a usual fever. We finally know why his health's been on the decline for the past few months. I'll only be here for a few hours. Uh-oh, that doesn't seem like any fun. Sounds very expensive, too. I'm worried. It looks like his condition is getting worse. The doctor said he probably doesn't have much time left. He told us to gather the family and inform everyone to prepare for the worst. Oh my, is that really what he said? We knew this day would come eventually, but it's still so difficult. Are you doing okay? Let me know if you need anything. Heck yeah, this just made my day. I really hit the jackpot. Ooh, I just knew today would be my lucky day. Huh? What are you talking about? You said it won't be long. I can finally get rid of that pest. Woohoo! Don't you feel sad at all? This is your husband we're talking about. If I were down in the dumps, I wouldn't still be here celebrating at the slots. Oh, don't you want to come home yet? So, don't you even care about his well-being at all? You don't want to come home and check on him? I'm sure he'd appreciate it if you calm and showed that you cared a little. I can pick you up if you want. Bah, he'll still be there when I get back. Let me have my fun. Taking care of that old fart is just a chore. He's so stinky and it's so freaking tiring. I need a break. You don't even. Never mind. I guess it doesn't really matter since I'm the one taking care of him. If you left him to you, he'll get bruised up just like a banana. And you're too harsh with your words. Poor Antonio, his suffering would never end. What are you trying to say, huh? Want to say it straight to my face? We can't entrust his care to you. You have no empathy and you won't take care of him properly. Does it make you feel good, knowing that he can even lift a finger to fight back against you? Is that why you do whatever you want to him? I know you would neglect him. Do you think we would even want to leave him to you? What? Are you trying to lecture me now? Don't make me laugh. <laughs> you think you're better than me just because you watch over that big baby? You are way in over your head. I only leave it to you because it's the kind of chore a piece of trash like you should do, and I shouldn't bother. You would think that spouses would support each other until the very end. And yet, here you are, gambling day in and day out. I feel bad for Antonio. I'm the one you should feel sorry for. I wanted him to work more and make even more money. And now look at him. To think he spends most of his time sick in bed? He's done nothing lately to bring home any money for me. Ugh, it's too soon. We barely have any savings. Even if he did work his butt off, what would even be the point? Where does all the money go? To the medical bills? To the house? No. You take our money and go to the slots and horse races every single day. Any money he'd make would be gone the next day. Poof. You even leech off Antonio's 401k. Don't you? Must be nice to be a wrinkly old prune. All that free money. But out. I'll spend my money on whatever I want. Will you ever stop going to the slots? You've had this problem for years and years. If you only just quit, we'd be a lot better off. Hey, no one asked for your opinion. Do you ever shut your damn mouth? Do you think you're my mom or something? Of course not. I'm your daughter-in-law. Then stop sticking your nose where it doesn't belong. I'm your mother-in-law. Show me some damn respect, you brat. I'm only saying this because I'm thinking about Antonio. He's at the end of his life. Can you be a bit more caring? He's too meek to say anything. But I know he's deeply hurt by how you've been treating him. 
Ain't nothing going on in that potato brain of his. He would think he's mute. He doesn't say anything when I talk to him. Looks like he's already catatonic. <laughs> he doesn't do anything except lay there all day. It'd be a waste to spend money on him when he's going to die soon anyway. Isn't it a waste to go to the slots? You barely win anything. You just keep losing more and more money. What did I say about butting in, huh? I'll live my life how I want to. I don't have to listen to your whiny bullcrap. You say you're thinking about Antonio and stuff, but you're just looking for some extra cash once he's kicked the bucket, aren't you? You're wrong. Am I? Acting like a goody two-shoes? What a hussy you turned out to be. To think, my son married a gold digger. Stop trying to turn this around on me, Susan. We all know you only stuck around for the cash. Not for this family. You want Antonio's money for yourself. You don't even love him at all, do you? Do you only see him as a cash cow? For Antonio's sake, why don't you just leave him alone? He doesn't deserve any of this. Shut up. You've crossed the line now. Pack your bags and get the hell out of my house. You're not getting even a penny from that old coot. Susan? Where are you? Are you here yet? I'm pretty sure I told you that the memorial service is at 1230. We'll be starting soon. Please, come quickly. We're just waiting on you. I just got back to the house. What do you want? Feel free to get started without me. Why are you at the house? Did you forget something? Be quick. Nah, I'm changing out of these stuffy clothes. Oh, I just hate wearing these tights. I was bored out of my mind, so I'm heading to the slots. Time to celebrate! <laughs> As you can see, something came up, so I can't make it to the funeral anymore. See ya! Are you serious? Today is Antonio's funeral, and you'd rather go to the slots? I can't believe this! I thought that for once, you'd skip out and go in. I'm sure I won't miss much. You'll be fine without little Omi, right? Marshall can just be the family rep. He's such a good son. I'm sure he's got it all handled. That's not the issue here. Isn't it improper for a wife not to be at her husband's funeral? Please, come quickly. I can swing by and pick you up so it's faster. Nah, don't waste your time. I found something more interesting than some boring funeral. What do you mean you found something more interesting? What could be a better use of your time than attending the funeral service? Antonio's last will and testament. His will? Where was it? In a desk drawer in his study. So uncreative. It took me less than a minute to find it. Why did you go in there? No one's been in there since Antonio passed away. We haven't even cleaned it up yet. But you're rummaging around for cash because you don't have any money left? You're the desperate to go through the his things? Don't tell me you lost it all at the slots yesterday. I told you, we're tight on money right now. We still have Antonio's hospital bills, the funeral costs. How could you? Nah, who cares about that? I'm set for life. Woohoo! I think you should be more worried about what's written in the will. There's something very delightful written here. You should have waited until the whole family was there before you started reading it. Well, it's good news for me and bad news for you. Why? What does it say? Here's what it says. <clears throat> you don't have to deal with that damned woman anymore. Isn't this great? Damned woman? I don't get it. Why is that written in there? It's talking about you, of course. Me? No, it can't be. And, just like it says right here, I'm gonna kick you out. <laughs> Good riddance! I'm so happy to finally get rid of such an insolent brat. All you do is nag my poor ears off. I can kick back and relax finally. I can get some peace and quiet. Kick me out? Are you sure you're reading it correctly? But I'm married to your son. He wouldn't do that to us. And I can just leave all by myself without him. I can read just fine. Then you and Marshall can leave together. How sweet. Either way, once you're gone, I'll have this place to myself. 
You two noisy brats can see yourselves out. Please, wait a moment. Is that really Antonio's dying wish? I don't believe it. Hey, are you doubting me? After all, we did to support him when he needed us the most. Was it really his wish to drive us out of the house? You'd be all alone there. Still in denial? That's really what's written here. And this is for sure his handwriting. I would know since he was my husband. You poor thing. You work so hard to take care of that geezer and this is the thanks you get? <laughs> After that boring funeral's over, get all your crap here, then get the hell out. No, wait. Something's off here. Antonio would never. I know, he wouldn't do this to us. If you don't want to leave, I'll kick you out myself. Since I'm here now, I can help out a bit. I'll toss out all your crap to the yard so it'll be ready for it. <laughs> Go for ya. No, I won't believe it until I see his will for myself. I believe in Antonio. He would never do something like this. I wouldn't hold my breath if I were you. You think you're someone important? My husband never bothered thinking of you. You thought you could get your grubby little hands on his money just by acting all buddy-buddy with him? But things didn't go as planned, huh? How pitiful, you gold-digging leech. Who are you calling a leech? Aren't you the one that's after the money? The ones that were close to Antonio were only me and Marshall. You were never around to support him. You spent more time at the slots than with your own husband. But at the end of the day, don't you know how that ultimately the most important person to him is his beloved wife? I will admit, he's been a pretty useless husband up till now. But now that he's dead, he's finally being useful for a change. I knew I didn't marry him for nothing. Ah, uh, you poor thing. You tried so hard only to get tossed out like garbage. <laughs> Is that boring service done with already? I've got your bags all lined up and ready to go. Hurry up and pick up your crap that's an eyesore out here. Go on, leave, you damn woman. It's what my husband wanted. And don't you dare even think about coming back. Sorry to rain in your parade, but I've got some bad news for you. I'm not the one he's talking about. What are you talking about? You've got the wrong idea. In fact, the damn woman he's talking about in here is you, not me. You are the one he wants to kick out. Huh? I told you I can read perfectly fine. What kind of nonsense are you spouting this time? You're the damned woman. From Antonio's perspective, shouldn't it be you? I can't think of anyone else it could possibly be, given how badly you've treated him. It can't possibly be me, since we were so close and he was so kind to me. Moreover, the will that you have now isn't even the official one. What the hell are you saying? I don't know what kind of crap you're spouting, but this document is the real deal. Go ahead, take a closer look. There isn't an even an official seal or signature at the bottom, is there? No, there isn't. But I'm sure it's here somewhere. Let me check. It's probably just a letter addressed to us. Looks like someone jumped the gun a bit there. A lawyer handed us a legal and effective version of the will just a moment ago. It's signed, sealed, and everything. A lawyer gave you what? And what kind of will would have words like damn woman in it anyways? Expressions like that aren't even allowed in official documents like this. Although, I do have some good news for you. Your name is written in here. Why the hell wouldn't it be? It probably says I'm the one inheriting all of his assets, doesn't it? I hate to break it to you, but no. You're not. It says that all of his assets will be inherited by Marshall. In other words, my beloved husband. What? Why? I'm his spouse. At the very least, half of his assets should go to me. Nope, you're mistaken. Well then, why the hell is my name written in there? The part in here that talks about you is about your removal as the beneficiary. You're lying, wench. That can't be. There's a request written in this will to remove you as a beneficiary. Once you're removed, you won't be able to inherit any of Antonio's assets. Why the hell can't I, uh, huh? As his wife? Isn't it my natural right? The one exception to that is that if the beneficiary is 
deemed unfit to inherit any property or assets, and then will be stripped off their rights. Stripped of their rights? What kind of bullcrap system is this? Who the hell made up these rules? If the beneficiary committed a serious offense or shows negligence, one of the qualifications here is if there were cases of considerable misconduct where the beneficiary was reckless with their assets. You seem to fit the bill perfectly. You're not taking anything away from me, you psychotic bitch. Over my dead body, I won't let you pull this crap on me. With the lawyer carrying out the will, we'll be taking this family court from now on. See you there, I suppose. And since we also have evidence of your cruel treatment towards Antonio, I think our claim is an even higher chance of being accepted. What do you think? Evidence? What are you talking about? What evidence? Antonio really covered all of his bases. He secretly hid a camera and Mike in his room. How sneaky. I saw it all. You picked on him every day, didn't you? You belittled him with your words. Beat him. Kicked him. God knows what else happened off the record. I lost my right as beneficiary because of those insignificant little things? That was child's play. Nothing more than some light teasing. Stop trying to minimize it. It wasn't insignificant. It had a serious impact on his well-being. He was all bruised up. He even suffered from depression all because of you. We even have a medical certificate to validate everything. The only thing I had to look forward to in life was to get his damn assets. Ugh. What the hell am I supposed to do now? If that's the case, you should have treated him better. It must be karma. When Marshall inherits Antonio's assets, even the house will be under his name. Sorry, but it looks like you're going to have to leave. You plan to drive me out? Me? A poor old widow? The two of you are heartless monsters. How could you do this to me? I mean, it does say here in the will, you don't have to deal with your mother-in-law anymore. I'm just going along with what's written here. As expected from Antonio, he has always been there for us. Just like we had been here for him. Even his final moments, he's still looking out for me and Marshall. Oh. And what did Marshall say, huh? He wouldn't dare toss me out like that. I'm his mother. Isn't it up to him to decide what to do, and not you? You know, since he's the beneficiary now, who do you think you are? As a matter of fact, he's thinking of kicking you out too. Antonio and Marshall share the same sentiment, so there's no problem at all. They both agree that your addiction was spiraling out of control. You need to be stopped somehow. The audacity of that insolent boy. What about me, then? What if I have a problem? Too bad. We don't have any problems over here. If you wanted to help you, we can do anything about you leaving. I won't allow this to happen. I'm gonna reduce that frickin' will to ashes. Ashes! And when I do, you're gonna regret you ever tried kicking me to the curb. Hand it over, you punk. That's probably not a good idea. You'll get arrested if you do something like that. Well, I mean, I guess it would be a lot quieter around here if they threw you in prison. I'm heading back to the funeral home right now. You'd better be waiting outside when I get there, or else. This is a load of bullcrap. Open these damn doors right now. Why the hell can't I get inside? I'm the wife. How improper. Why do I have to be chased out of here? All of the family members present here don't want you to come inside. Since you're the type of person to skip out on a funeral to go to slots, the figure you'd be fine out there. I came back right away, didn't I? The only people that can say their last farewell to Antonio are the ones that were closest to him. Just stay outside, Susan. Which conniving little rat is the lawyer? I've got some business with him. Let me speak to him. What are you hoping to achieve? No matter what you say, nothing will change. I won't be satisfied until I give that puny lawyer a piece of my mind. My head's about to explode because of all of this bullcrap will. Let me at them. The lawyer said he's an acquaintance of Antonio's. He's pretty angry at you, knowing what you've done to him. You probably shouldn't get into a fight with him or anybody, especially a freaking lawyer. It's so scary. I wouldn't want to make him angry if I were you. Especially since he knows the law like the back of his hand. He could probably lock you up forever. I don't have even a cent on me. Not even a single coin. That's my only issue here, I swear. My checkings, my savings, they're both all dried up. 
That's because all you do is go to the sloths or the horse races. There's some mystery as to why you literally have nothing left. I don't think I can keep on living if you kick me out like this. Please, don't cut me off like this. That's all I ask. Okay, okay, get it. But what Antonio wanted was probably your complete and utter destruction. You really had this coming for you, huh? I'm sure you'll get your just desserts. Oh, wait. What about the insurance money? Antonio received a large sum of insurance money. But the beneficiary should have been me. That money's all mine, right? Woohoo! Jackpot! Phew! That was a close one. For a second there, I thought I was a goner. Actually, I have some more bad news for you. Are you freaking kidding me? What is it this time? It looks like Antonio also changed the beneficiary for the insurance money from you to my husband. You won't receive even a single penny. Ugh, that crusty old geezer. He really pulled out all the stops to plan all this. I wonder just how far that bastard went. Does he really hate me that much? I barely did anything to him. You hurt him deeply, physically and emotionally. You're only getting what you deserve, nothing less. He's giving you a taste of your own medicine, even though he was a bit meek. He really was a man of action rather than words. Action? My butt. I knew I couldn't trust that conniving old fossil. He put in all this effort just to get his revenge on me? What a petty, senile old man. If you just think about it a little, you'd understand. He did it because you'd keep the house for yourself and leave us to fend for ourselves. How twisted. I guess it's impossible for even Antonio to love you. So then, was all of this your big plan to get rid of me, huh? Or was Antonio the mastermind all along? No matter what I say, you're just going to believe whatever you want to. Believe. That won't stop me from kicking you out, though. I hope you already started packing your bags. It seems like the house will be more spacious. Oh, it'll be nice and cozy. Maybe I'll rearrange the furniture. No way. You're crazy if you think I'm ever going to leave. Hmm. If that's the case, let's start with tossing your personal belongings outside. Isn't that what you plan on doing to me? You're bluffing, you stupid bitch. How many times do I have to tell you? Don't get it twisted. You're the damn woman, so get the hell out of my house. After that... Susan's removal as a beneficiary proceeded without a hitch. She was stripped on her rights as a beneficiary. And then we kick her out of the house, just like Antonio would have wanted. After we kick her out, my husband burned some sage to cleanse the house. Hopefully, that will get rid of all the negative energy she left behind. Since it was his mom, Marshall said he still feel pretty uncomfortable about the whole situation with Susan. I'm sure it's difficult having to see your own mom self-destruct like that. When I think about Antonio's final years, I understand his feelings a bit better. It was probably a sad and lonely existence, living with someone like Susan, who was a slave to her addiction to slots. No matter how hard he must have tried to help her, it's difficult to save someone who doesn't want to be saved. It's hard to feel compassion for someone like her. You know what they say? You reap what you saw. The other day... I held Antonio's picture in my hands and told him that his wish finally came true. When I did that, the rain started pouring down in response. When he saw what had happened, Marshall said that his dad is probably crying up in heaven. I guess we'll never know whether they were tears of sadness or tears of relief. He suffered so much while he was alive. I hope that, at the very least, he can rest in peace now. Hey Jake, guess what? I've got great news. You won't believe it. I'm getting married. Oh my god. What? Really? Yeah. My boyfriend just proposed to me. We want to get registered this year and make everything official. I'm so happy for you, Clara. Wow, this is huge news. Congratulations. I'm really glad that you found someone you really love. We should celebrate. It's hilarious that you think we should celebrate this. What? I'm confused. What's not to celebrate, though? I guess you haven't realized what this really means for you. This whole time, you've been a bum at home, 
doing nothing. Meanwhile, I went out and found myself a new husband. What? I've not been a bum at home, though. Where did you get that idea? While you've been lazing around doing nothing, I fell in love and starting a whole new chapter of my life. Do you see the difference between us? I hope I spelled it out clearly enough for you. Aren't you worried about yourself at all? If I were you, I would absolutely be worried. Where's this all coming from all of a sudden? I don't understand. You've been wasting your entire life away. It's about time you realized. How much longer are you going to keep living like this? You're such an antisocial bum, doing nothing all day long. Don't you feel ashamed? Wait a second, Clara. I'm seriously confused here. Are you accusing me of basically being a freeloader at home? Seriously, where did you get that idea? Look at you, getting all mad because I called you out. Face it, it's the truth. I'm trying to give you a reality check. Don't tell me you're going to try and deny the fact that you've been a bum this entire time, right? What are you doing at home all the time? Protecting the house? No one asked for a guard dog. What? That's not what I've been doing every day at home, though. Seriously, Jake, get it together. Just admit it already. It's clear as day. Look at yourself. You're already an adult and you're still living with mom and dad. How much longer are you going to live there? Honestly, I'm even embarrassed to call you my brother. As an older brother, shouldn't you be setting a good example for me? I know getting fired sucks, but it's been a long time. That's literally not what I'm doing at home, though. Can you please explain to me how you reached this conclusion? There's definitely been some kind of misunderstanding. Let's talk about this. I think it's pretty obvious, just by looking at you. You should follow my example instead. It's about time you got another job. If I end up having a baby, you know that it'll be everyone's main priority, right? That means mum and dad won't have time to take care of you anymore. You need to learn how to be independent. Hey, mom, can I talk to you for a moment? There's something on my mind. Of course, what's wrong? Just a moment ago, Clara told me that she's getting married. Oh, yes. I'm glad she told you. It's wonderful news, isn't it? I'm glad Clara messaged you about it so quickly. We are thrilled for her. Yeah, I'm happy for her too. But she said something really weird to me that I'm having a hard time understanding. Something weird? What did she say? She called me a lazy bum and accused me of doing nothing. She said I needed to stop freeloading off you and dad and a bunch of other awful things. She thinks really lowly of me. Oh, she said all that. It sounds like you know something about this. Can you please explain to me what's going on? All of this is so sudden, I can't wrap my head around it. Why does she think that I'm mooching off you too? I'm really sorry, Jake. There's an explanation for all of this. I didn't know how to bring this up with you for a while. I actually lied to Clara and told her you were living at home with us as a freeloader for now. Mom, what the heck? You know that I'm employed full time though. I'm temporarily doing remote work right now. Why would you say something like that to her? Of course I know that. But there's a reason for it. If I told Clara the truth, don't you think she'd feel bad? I don't want her to feel bad about herself. Huh? Why would she feel bad about herself, though? Well, you know how things are, especially with finding work these days. Clara also wants to find remote work. Ideally, she'd like to stay home too and earn income. Just like you. I mean, yeah, remote work is pretty great. I don't have to try and beat rush hour all the time. Commuting and getting stuck in traffic sucks. Plus, I can nap whenever I want to as long as I finish my work. I agree, it's really nice. I'm grateful to my company for letting me work at home. Clara's company doesn't want to follow the whole trend of remote work, though. They're pretty strict in keeping their employees at the office. 
I guess you can say they're a bit behind the times. Even though Clara requested to work remotely, her manager didn't approve it, so she's been pretty upset because of it. I mean, there are some places that prefer having employees in person though. It's just the company's policy. There's nothing that you can do about it. Maybe they'll change in the future, who knows. But that might take a while logistically. That sucks for her though. I get why she'd feel kind of upset by it. Clara's been trying her best going to work every day. She's getting more and more stressed out by her job though. You've had it much easier staying at home, working in the comfort of your pajamas. She's really been having a tough time. Drivers these days are getting crazier and crazier in the mornings. That's why I didn't tell her about your actual job. If she knew how easy you had it, she'd feel even worse about herself. Your sister is sensitive to things like this. Do you understand why I couldn't tell her the truth? But you're literally lying to her and putting me in this awful position. Do you want to see the messages she sent? She's literally looking down on me right now. How is this fair? I don't want to hurt Clara's feelings, though. When Clara had a chance to visit us the other week, I sat her down and explained. She'd ask me why you were always at home these days. Explained? You just lied to her. I didn't really have a choice. It just slipped out like that. It's such a small little lie, though. I told her you got fired and staying at home right now as a freeloader. But why would you say something like that, Mom? Why? Just tell her the truth instead of making up such a pointless story. It's not pointless, Jake. Don't you understand? You need to think about Clara's feelings. I'm her mother, of course. I would try to make sure she doesn't feel hurt. But you're also my mother, too. What is the point of making me feel bad just to make Clara happier? You've always been hard to handle as a kid. You misbehaved all the time. But in comparison, Clara's always been well-behaved, got in good grades at school, and listened to us. I mean, yeah, I know I wasn't the easiest kid to handle growing up. I know you guys always thought of Clara as the little angel of the family. But we're adults now, and things have obviously changed. I'm not the same rowdy kid anymore. To think that you'd get the privilege of working at home before Clara just didn't seem right somehow. That's why I feel so sorry for Clara. You're not allowed to be better than Clara. You've always been second. So that's how it is, huh? I know you dote on Clara. I grew up always being second to her. I know she gets priority over everything, and I've struggled to accept that. Now I see why you told her I was a lazy bum mooching off my parents. I already said sorry earlier, didn't I? So, we can move on from this topic now. You're not allowed to tell Clara about this conversation. Do you understand? Just play along with it and pretend you're a freeloader. Are you serious, Mom? I let you live in my house right now. Have you forgotten that? Do not say a word of this conversation to her. Do you hear me? I will kick you out of my house if you do. Don't test me, Jake. Hey, Jake. Sorry, but can you get out of the house, like, right now? Excuse me? You spent plenty of time enjoying your time as a freeloader. And I'm sure you have plenty more time on your hands. Can you pack your bags and move everything out in three days? That'd be great, thanks! Uh, what the heck? Three days should be enough time, right? You'll be done moving out this weekend. So yeah, just wanted to give you a heads up. Don't leave anything behind, okay? Thanks. Wait, wait, wait. What the heck are you talking about? Why am I getting kicked out all of a sudden? I don't understand what I did to deserve this all of a sudden. It's hard on the family when you're freeloading off everyone. Don't you think it's too much? And plus, what if my fiancé finds out? I don't know how I'd explain it to him. He's coming over next weekend to meet mom and dad. I don't want him to know that my brother is a lazy bum. That would be so embarrassing. What if he finds out and suddenly doesn't love me? Because his brother-in-law is going to be a burden on him. And that's why you think it's a good idea to kick me out before he comes over. Exactly! 
I feel like this is the best solution for all of us. All of you just think about yourselves. Where on earth am I supposed to go? Figure it out. I don't know why you're telling me this all of a sudden. But if you really don't want me around while he's visiting, you know I can just go somewhere else, right? I can walk around town instead. He's literally coming over for a few hours at most. If you want me out of the house for the whole day, then just tell me. I'll make plans for the morning until late in the evening. What are you talking about, Jake? That's not what I mean. What do you mean then? I'm telling you to pack your bags forever. That's what I meant by not leaving anything behind. It's not only the fact that I don't want my fiancé to see you. I don't want him to know you even exist. Are you serious? Yes. I want you to get out and to never come back. Don't even think about it. We don't want to see your face around here. What are you saying? This is my house too. I don't understand what I did to you. Once I get married, we're moving into the house. I think the rest is pretty obvious. We're going to start a brand new life as a newly married couple together. So don't try to get in our way. You're taking the entire house for yourself? Exactly. Now, do you understand? Finally, I can live a peaceful life with my husband. What about mom and dad? We'll put up with them for now. But I think there's a retirement home in their near future. You, however, need to get out ASAP. I've had it up to here with your crap already. Why do I have to bend over for you too? This is where I live. It's also my home. Oh, by the way, Mum and Dad totally approve of us moving into the house. What? Mum and Dad are okay with this? Mum and Dad are fed up with you. It must be so tough on them having to take care of their adult son all the time. I was talking to Mum and Dad about getting pregnant soon and they'd be happy for me to raise the baby at home. I'm hoping it's a boy. So you see, there are a lot of reasons why I need you gone, like yesterday. What? I don't understand. If I have a baby boy, then he can replace you. Mom said she won't need you anymore. You're joking, right? I'm her son. Are you sure? Mom and Dad said stuff like that. You're not just making this up, are you? I know it's hard to believe, but trust me, that's exactly what they said. Anyways, you get my point. Hurry up and get out of the house, would you? I really don't want to tell my fiancé about you at all. I'd rather keep your existence a secret. All right, I got it. I'll go then. I don't really have much of a choice, it seems. It's nice to see you finally understand. Hmm. Let me just confirm something with you real quick. You don't want me showing up at your wedding, right? You know, with me being lazy and useless and all that. Even if I am your brother. Obviously, duh. Definitely don't want to see you there. My wedding is going to be absolutely gorgeous. We're renting a beautiful wedding hall. It's not a place for someone like you. You'd just stink up the whole place. When was the last time you even showered? I see. Got your message. Loud and clear. Do you even know how much money I've spent on the wedding? You wouldn't even be able to comprehend it all. I've spent well over 50 grand. Who in their right mind would invite you? Oh my god, you spent $50,000? It's an amount of money that you'll probably never have in your whole life. Mom and Dad saved up all this money just for me. Isn't it sweet of them? They've been saving up little by little without me even knowing. It was such a heartwarming surprise. Wow, that's really sweet of them to do that for you. Oh, by the way, they don't have anything saved up for you. Oops, sorry, I guess I took it all. It's not like you provided any value around the house anyway. And if I were them, I wouldn't spend my savings on you either. Plus, I just don't see you ever getting married. Never mind finding a girlfriend. No girl would want to date a loser like you. Well, dang it. You really got me there. Look at you, taking all of this like a pathetic loser. I'm not going to introduce you to my fiancé or invite you to the wedding. Kind of makes you being a family member useless. You're such a burden on the family. Ugh. 
It's so exhausting dealing with you. Do us a favor and get out of our faces, would ya? No problem. I'll go ahead and take back the money I paid as well then. What? What money? Oh, don't worry. I won't help you at all with the 50,000. You guys can figure it out yourselves, right? After all, you're all hard-working adults with well-paying jobs. I'll call right now and tell them to cancel the transaction. Cancel? What are you talking about? What kind of transaction are you talking about? The wedding fees. Obviously. Duh. I already told you. Mom and Dad are paying for everything. It doesn't have anything to do with you. I don't need your help anyway. You don't even have a job. You literally have no income. Oh yeah. I guess Mom and Dad didn't tell you the part where they literally begged me to pay for it. That whole story must have slipped their minds. It's okay. It happens to the best of us. They begged? You're obviously just making this all up. I mean, you're not worried about mom and dad technically paying for the wedding. The money is sorta in their hands. But where do you think all that money came from? All 50k came from me. Your lazy, good-for-nothing brother. You don't have that kind of money, though. It was all so sudden when mom came to me and asked me to give her that much money. I thought someone had an accident or something. But she said it was all for you, and she needed the money straight away. She didn't tell me any of the details at the time, though. But since you told me that your wedding happened to cost $50,000, I was able to put the pieces together. What are you saying? I just finished putting in all the transfer details right before you texted me, actually. But it's okay, the transfer hasn't gone through yet, so I'll go ahead and press that cancel button. Man, I've never been so glad the bank delays money transfers for a few days. Saved my bacon for real there. Wait a second. What are you trying to say? You have money or something? Hmm, I thought I made it pretty clear, didn't I? What do you mean? Why on earth would mom and dad beg you out of all people? You have no job. You have no money. You just sit around the house all day. You don't even go out. You're in your pajamas staring at your computer all day long. Where did you get such a massive amount of money? If you're really interested, you should probably ask mom. She's got the whole story. I'm sure she'll stop hiding the truth by now. There's nothing else she can do. What truth? What is she hiding? Looks like my cancel request went through. I'm going to be pretty busy packing up my bags and everything, so I won't be able to respond much. See ya! Jake, you have some explaining to do, young man. What did you tell your sister? And why did you cancel the transfer? I thought we had a deal. I could ask you the same thing, Mom. You really have some explaining to do. You set this whole thing up to try and kick me out of the house, didn't you? Mm, I can explain. You really have the guts to kick me out after everything I've done for this family. I've been supporting you two this entire time by myself after you and Dad got laid off. I know, but... You know that I've bent over backwards trying to help you guys out, right? How hard I worked to climb the corporate ladder. I've been working full time remotely while taking care of the household chores too. You see that with your own eyes, don't you? I do everything in my power just to help out my family. Do you understand what would happen to this family if I left? Do you realize that I'm the only reason you have a roof over your head? Without me, we would have been homeless ages ago. We would have been sleeping on the streets already. Of course, I'm thankful for your support. Thanks to you, we're almost done paying back the loan of the house too. And I know you pay for a lot of the living expenses too. It's not just that either. How many times do you think I've stopped you and dad from fighting after you guys got laid off? How many hours do you think I've spent trying to be the mediator between you two? Well... I always gave you two money whenever you fought about not having any money. If you needed something, I was always there to support you guys. 
I always took extra time out of my day to take care of the chores. Just so you too would be able to get out and have some fun. Do you understand how much I've worked for this family? Do you even realize the amount of sacrifice I've had to make just to make all of you happy? Because I actually care about my family. Because I'm not selfish. I'm sorry, Jake. I'm really sorry. Of course, we're grateful for everything you've done. You're grateful? Don't make me laugh. If you're really grateful, then why are you kicking me out of the house? That's a different topic. You know how things are. Sometimes things like this happen. In the end, you chose Clara over me. No matter what I do, I'll never be good enough for you. It doesn't matter anymore, though. You've already shown me your true colors. Have fun living with Clara and her husband. But of course, I'm not just going to be packing up my bags and leaving. I'll also be cutting ties with all of you. What? You can't do that. You think I want to be a part of this family anymore? After all the help I've given, this is what I get in return. You won't be receiving any help from me anymore. You can depend on Clara and her husband from now on. I'm sure they can support others, including themselves. Jake, we need to talk. Mom and Dad told me everything. You really are working a full-time job. Wow, that's pretty awesome. You make double what I make in a year, too. I'm really proud of you. It's pretty obvious what you're getting at by changing your tone all of a sudden. I don't have any ulterior motives, though. I just wanted to apologize for all the misunderstandings. I'm sorry I got swept up in Mom's lies. That was pretty dumb of me. Um, it doesn't really matter anymore to me. Alright, heading out now. Bye! Wait, Jake, don't go! I still want to talk to you a bit more. Can you listen to me? I want you to be there when my fiancé comes over to meet Mom and Dad. Can you stay this weekend? What? I didn't want to introduce you to my fiancé because I thought you were just a freeloader. But you're actually working really hard. That's why I want you to meet him. No, it's okay. You don't have to do all that. Don't be all shy. Come over, it'll be fun. And of course, I'd love for you to attend the wedding as well. So I was wondering if you'd be willing to help us out again with the wedding fees. It's hard for me to suddenly go from 50k to zero. I knew you only messaged me for money. Please, Jake. I really, really need this. Let's start over again, okay? I want to make a blank slate for us. You're the only son of the family, so you're a very important person to us. No one else can replace you. You don't have to move out anymore either. Please consider helping me pay for the wedding. No, I'm not interested in starting over. You should probably tell your fiancé everything. I'm not just cutting off ties with mom and dad. You're included too. What? You're cutting ties with me? You probably should also tell your fiancé to not bother coming over to visit mom and dad. The wedding is getting called off and probably your marriage too. It's such a shame it ended up being this way. You could have had a great wedding. What are you saying? Why are you saying the marriage is getting called off too? I don't understand. Oh yeah, sorry, it slipped my mind. Forgot to mention this. I actually bumped into your fiancé the other day, you know? What? How did you two meet? That's actually how I found out about me. Poor guy never knew I existed. But lucky for me that I remembered what he looked like from the photos you posted online. He deserved to know what he was getting into. So I told him everything. From the way you guys treated me to the wedding fees, you should have seen the look on his face at the end of our conversation. He told me he's calling off everything. What are you talking about? How on earth did you just happen to bump into him? At the bank, actually. Right before you messaged me. What? Yeah? I had to stop by the bank to cancel the money transfer. The bank called me in to confirm my identity. 
They thought it might have been some kind of scam. Who transfers such a large sum of money and then cancels it after like two hours? They even took me into a different room just to talk to me about this. Must have really alerted their computer systems. After I explained the whole thing, the guy asked me if I happened to be your brother. What? Why would he... You never told me your fiancé worked at the bank. What a funny coincidence, honestly. The person that I ended up explaining the whole transfer cancellation thing to turned out to be none other than your precious fiancé. Honestly, both our jaws dropped to the floor. I can't even make this stuff up. How is that even possible? I know, right? When I was explaining the whole thing, I was kind of complaining a lot too. I didn't mean to vent about my personal issues to some random guy at the bank, but man, I was mad. But he put two and two together and realized exactly who and what I was talking about. When he pulled up my account on his computer and looked at my last name, oh man, that was crazy. No, you're definitely lying. That can't be right. I know he does work at a branch close to our house, but this is way too much of a coincidence. Honestly, I'm in the same boat as you here. I didn't expect it either. It's too bad for you too. Your fiancé seemed like a pretty nice guy. He worked so quickly and efficiently too. I hope he gets a raise soon, because he sure deserves it. Oh my god. What should I do? He suddenly texted me. He says he wants to call off the wedding. What about wanting to move him into the house to replace me? You probably should tell him. He listened patiently to me when I complained about being replaced, but his face was hard as stone. What? They want me to move in immediately? We're going to be living with her parents, but haven't even met them yet. She never even mentioned me moving into her parents' house. She wants me to go now? I was going to tell him that on my own time later. I was waiting for the right time to explain. Oh, really? Sorry. I jumped the gun then. He's really, really confused and taken aback by how quickly you want things to move. Especially knowing that you three are doing this mostly to try and replace me as the son. What? I told him to take care of the house and family since I'll be gone. I explained to him all the living expenses and demands that he needs to meet in order to satisfy mom and dad and also talked about the chores. Exactly the way that mom likes for them to be done. After all, he's going to be my successor, right? He's got to know everything. Why would you say all that? You seem pretty worried. He wanted to know what was going to happen to him if he didn't agree to go along with everything. He said it sounded like you were trying to turn him into some kind of family butler or something. After hearing about all the stuff that I do with the house, he was really disgusted and disappointed with how you guys have been treating me. He couldn't believe how any parent could make their child do everything and be treated like a second-class citizen. No, this is a lie. There must have been some kind of misunderstanding. That's not the truth. What are you going to do about this mess now? Why should I care? I'm the one who's literally disowning all of you. You two are going to be talking about this soon, right? Just tell him everything yourself. I can't. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. He thinks I'm an awful person. This is such a huge misunderstanding. How am I supposed to get married at this rate? Mom and Dad are both unemployed. Don't worry. I'm sure you'll think of something. You're all grown up now. Anyway. I'm blocking you guys now. We won't see each other ever again. Wait, Jake! Where are you going? Are you serious about leaving forever? Please don't cuddle ties with us. Hope you'll be able to handle taking care of mom and dad. After Clara had a conversation with her fiancé, they ultimately decided to call off the engagement. Despite Clara's determined efforts to reconcile, expressing how she had been deceived by her own parents into believing untrue things about her brother, her fiancé countered by highlighting her own questionable behavior, accusing her of looking down on others. He asserted that he couldn't envision a future with someone who harbored such sentiments towards their own family. As expected, 
the family dynamics changed significantly in my absence. With my departure, Clara became the sole financial support for our parents. But unfortunately, her income fell short of their initial expectations. Consequently, my parents had to take on part-time and sporadic temporary jobs to meet their financial obligations.